we're going to look at a comparison between Hack the Box, Try Hack Me and Proving Grounds to see what they have on offer and which one is right for you. We'll take a look at the features of each one, figure out the pros and cons, and then at the end, we'll make a comparison so that wherever you are in your cybersecurity journey, you can decide what's the best way to spend your time and to make sure that you get the most out of your studies. It might also be time to mix things up a little bit. If you've been spending a lot of time on one platform, the others might give you a fresh set of challenges and help you keep your motivation high. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So first up, we have Hack the Box, which I suspect is the most popular platform of the three. It's been around since 2017 and personally I have fond memories of the Hack Your Way In Invitation Code Challenge and it definitely helped me improve my skills when I was active on the platform. However, a few years ago I did burn out pretty hard while trying to grind up to a higher rank. But since then, I think a lot has changed. So let's take a look at what's on offer. So here are the active machines that you get points for. The harder the box, the more points you get, and they're split by user access and root access. This is kind of the core of Hack the Box. You compete for points and see how you do on the leaderboard. You gain ranks as you earn more points. And once you achieve a rank, you don't necessarily need to maintain it. What I mean by that is, once a box is retired, you'll actually lose the points associated with that box. But if you've achieved a rank, you will keep that rank. You'll have to keep solving stuff though to get yourself back to that point and then keep pushing further. Next, we have the retired machines. And these require a subscription to access, but if you're just starting out with CTF or you want to build some skills, then I think this is one of the best places to start. There are some really great challenges in here and you can also pick and choose based on what you'd like to focus on. For example, if you're trying to improve your Windows enumeration skills, filter by Windows and then take a look at the machines that have good community ratings. For each machine that's retired, there's also an IPSEC video and these video walkthroughs are a great place to improve because they don't just give you the solution, they show off kind of practical skills and give hints and tips on how to approach a box and how to solve it. So moving on to challenges, which is not something I did very much of in the past, but they are really useful if you want to look into a specific area like forensics or cryptography. These are great practice for capture the flag competitions or if you want to start diving into a new field or area. Now the Pro Labs are definitely a highlight of Hack the Box and I think that if you really want to learn and improve, this is where you need to be spending some time. It's all well and good being able to attack standalone boxes, but if you want to be successful as a penetration tester in the real world, you're going to be attacking networks. Personally, I've ticked off Dante and I'm over halfway through Raster Labs. However, they do take a decent amount of time and dedication to solve. But if you're serious about developing your skills, I'd say the Pro Labs are really the best way to do it. One other nice thing about Hack the Box is that there's always new things being released. So recently I saw that there were seasonal points and if you're really into the gamified side of Hack the Box and trying to climb the leaderboards and if that keeps you motivated then this is definitely a nice feature. The Academy is also a great resource for learning. I think the pricing based around cubes and how the subscription works is kind of dumb and overly complicated for no reason, similar to many parts of the Hack the Box UI, but the actual learning materials are very high quality and that's what really matters most. Even though it's been a couple of years since I was actively working on Hack the Box machines, there are a few boxes that have kind of stuck with me because I really enjoyed solving them and I thought they were really well built. If you haven't done them already, I definitely recommend Popcorn, Mango, Craft and CrossFit. And also, if you see the author Mr. Reboot, I think his boxes are excellent too. Off the top of my head, Book is a really nice one. So who's it for? Well, I'd say if you've completed your first cybersecurity certification and you want to start improving on your practical skills, then Hack the Box is a great place to be. Also, if you like the gamified style and want to improve your rank and climb the leaderboards, and if that motivates you, Hack the Box is also a great choice. There's a lot of good content. One thing I would say is that pay attention to the community ratings because there are plenty of boxes that just simply aren't worth your time. So next up, we have another big platform, Try Hack Me. And whilst I'd say it feels a little less competitive and maybe less gamified than Hack the Box, it's still a great resource for learning new things and improving your skills. Let's take a look at the main features. So once we're signed in, we have three sections that are under learn. 
These are learning paths, modules, and networks. These are presented in a really nice way so you can see a glimpse of the contents, what kind of level you're expected to be at, and the time commitment as well. The modules are smaller but more specific topics, which is really useful if you need to get up to speed on a topic very quickly. And then the networks at the bottom are similar to the Hack the Box Pro Labs, where you'll have a network or a number of machines to work through. Next up, we have the practice session. So you can work through a series of machines or you can come to general and get some recommendations of things to work on. The search is where I spend most of my time. And if I want to find a box to work on, I can filter by difficulty and type and then go through and choose one that suits me. There is one series of boxes called the New Year series, and I had a lot of fun solving these on live stream. I definitely recommend giving these a go if you're up for the challenge. Try Hack Me also has a King of the Hill section. I've done this a couple of times with work colleagues and it's quite a bit of fun. You basically need to get a shell, do your privilege escalation, and then write your username to the king.txt file. Once you've done that, you then need to stop others from overwriting your username in that file. And generally there are multiple ways in and different paths you can take. I wouldn't say these boxes are the most realistic, but they are quite a bit of fun. And if you're fast on the keyboard, you can get a competitive edge too. So who is this platform best for? Well, I'd say if you're really committed to studying for a specific role and you want to make sure that you have solid fundamentals and you like structured training, then definitely Try Hack Me is a top choice for you. It also has a great community and there is tons of content to explore. Our final platform for today is from Offsec and it's called Proving Grounds, which was released a few years back and is split into two sections, PG Play, which is essentially Von Hub boxes, and PG Practice, which is access to machines built by Offsec and community contributions. Whilst Proving Grounds has less features than Try Hack Me and Hack the Box, I actually think the average quality of the challenges from a boot to root perspective in PG Practice is the highest of all three platforms, or at least the most consistent. I suspect there is a fairly good QA process for new box submissions. There's not too much else to say on this, other than you can actually access write-ups for all of the boxes after 90 minutes. If you do access the write-up, you lose the points for that box. But I actually think this is a really powerful learning tool because it makes sure that you give the box a really good go before looking at the write-up, but also doesn't make us waste days and days of our time if we are well and truly stuck. My favorite box of all time is actually on the Proving Grounds platform and it's called Megavolt. I definitely recommend you give it a try if you're up for the challenge. And one last thing I'd like to mention is that if you're going for the OSCP certification and it's you know a month or a few weeks out, I'd recommend trying to solve Proving Ground boxes because they're probably going to be the closest in style to those that you find on your exam and there are also some retired exam machines in there too. In terms of pricing, all of the platforms are somewhat in the same ballpark. One isn't crazily expensive while another is much cheaper. Although I would say that if you're looking for free content, I think Try Hack Me probably has the most freely available content for you. So if you're trying to stay on a budget, that's a really good place to start. Finally, I want to share my personal insights into when the best time to utilize these platforms is. If you're a beginner and just starting out, get yourself onto one of the Try Hack Me learning paths. This is a really, really good way to make sure that you stay on track, stay motivated and learn the fundamentals. If you've done your first certification and you want to improve your practical skills, then you can consider moving over to Hack the Box or Proving Grounds for a while to work on some of the challenges that they have. If you have a specific topic you want to dive into, like forensics or red teaming, then definitely consider moving back to Try Hack Me for that and join one of those intermediate or advanced learning paths. Or if you really need to make sure that you're building skills that will translate into a pen test job or real world, then consider taking on some of the pro labs on Hack the Box or the networks in Try Hack Me. So that's it for this video. Of course, a lot of what it comes down to is personal preference, what you're motivated to do and what your goals are. But I hope this helps you get some insights into what's available for you. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have a favorite box or platform that you want to share, leave it down in the comments below. Catch you next time.